the blood supply to the kidney begins with the entry of the renal artery. It quickly branches into several segmental arteries. Let me see one distinctly right here. The segmental arteries then branch into interlobar arteries. And these arteries travel through the renal columns toward the cortex. Right at the junction uh, of the uh, medulla and the cortex, they follow the outer curvature of the pyramids. The arcuate arteries are here. They then give rise to many smaller interlobular arteries that extend now up into the cortex. I'm going to switch to the middle model, which is a blow-up of one pyramid and the cortex above it. This is the arcuate artery giving rise to the interlobular artery. And now we see coming off of the interlobular artery many small arteries that are leading to these light-colored bean-shaped structures. The arteries that are coming off are called afferent arterioles. I'm going to come to the last part of the model. The afferent arteriole enters into the interior now of this structure that we saw on the previous model that looks like a little pea. And this model now it's cut open. This is called Bowman's capsule. When the afferent arteriole enters into Bowman's capsule, it is thrown into a series of loops that are essentially a capillary bed called the glomerulus. This capillary bed, however, is not for exchange of oxygen. It's for exchange of fluid. The plasma, which is inside these small vessels, is forced out of the capillaries and is caught in Bowman's space. It's known as filtrate, and it will then flow out of Bowman's capsule, convoluted tubule, where it will be processed into urine. Now, there is some blood, of course, remaining in the capillaries. The blood then flows out of the efferent arteriole. The route back now <clears throat> is uh, going to include a second capillary bed. So I come to switching. I'm going to switch to the middle model, which is a blow up of one pyramid and the cortex above it. This is the arcuate artery giving rise to the interlobular artery. And now we see coming off of the interlobular artery many small arteries that are leading to these light colored bean shaped structures. The arteries that are coming off are called afferent arterioles. I'm going to come to the last part of the model. The afferent arteriole enters into the interior now of this structure that we saw on the previous model that looks like a little pea. And this model now, it's cut open. This is called Bowman's capsule. When the afferent arteriole enters into Bowman's capsule, it is thrown into a series of loops 
that are essentially a capillary bed called the glomerulus. This capillary bed, however, is not for exchange of oxygen. It's for exchange of fluid. The plasma, which is inside these small vessels, is forced out of the capillaries and is caught in Bowman's space. It's known as filtrate, and it will then flow out of Bowman's capsule through a tube called the proximal convoluted tubule, where it will be processed into urine. Now, there is some blood, of course, remaining in the capillaries. The blood then flows out of the efferent arterial. I'm going to come to the middle model and we'll trace the route of blood back. Now, it, this is still oxygenated blood. Here we are leaving the glomerulus as uh, the efferent arterial. The efferent arterial then breaks into a traditional capillary bed known as a peritubular capillary bed. And in this capillary bed, uh, we do have gas exchange. So notice that the blood leaving is deoxygenated. This blood is going to be available for reabsorption of many important things that might otherwise be lost in urine, in addition to supplying oxygen to the tissues. Some of the capillary beds, however, assume a very long, loopy shape to them. They serve the fa same functions of supplying oxygen and of uh, absorbing back into the body substances that the body uh, should not lose through urine. These long capillary beds that dip way down into the pyramids are called the vasorecta. From either type of capillary bed, the blood makes its way back to arcuate veins and then into the interlobar veins and segmental veins and finally out through the renal vein. The renal vein then um, delivers its blood into the inferior vena cava.